Back in the shop today with a revolutionary build that's going to help you remove rust. It's going to help you guys get results like this in less than an hour. So we have our transducer set up here and I kind of played with it for a little while, tried to figure out what would be the best way to do this. Um, you want full coverage and they also have to be very firmly connected to the surface, right? They can't be any kind of wiggle wabble, you know, you can't have them sliding around. They need, they need to get, have a good solid press fit to it. Of course, we're going to be using epoxy and these are sandblasted and you need to sandblast the stainless steel so that the epoxy has a good tooth because epoxy is not really going to stick that well to this. Now, normally you would go to the bottom of the tank, but this tank has a drain in it and there's a lot of of play or wobble in the bottom of that. This side is flat and it does not matter if you put these on the side or on the bottom. I've got to spot weld these onto the bottom and um, they're a lot smaller than I thought so my original plan was to turn that giant welder right over there into a spot welder but I've got a auto body spot welder. Now this is not the Harbor Freight version. This is the real deal. Um, this is a really really good high powered one. And um, you can see th in the Harbor Freight version, all the components are a lot smaller and weaker, and it just doesn't have the power. And it uh, doesn't have that oomph, but this might. So what I did was, it's got these little tips right here, and this has a taper, and it still tapers in there, right? It still locks into place very well. I'm not going to push it in because you got to pry them out. But what I've done is I've drilled and tapped this to fit my studs, okay? Now they go in pretty easy, and they come out pretty easy. Problem is, I'm going to have to rotate the whole gun. Here's the other problem. This guy right here, this moves freely. So what I did was, you've got enough threads on this. This usually sits in here about right there. Okay? And this is your positive and your negative. And as you push it on, it, it makes a connection around here. So it's not sending the power through the entire thing. It just has to connect from here to here. Okay, so I extended that out a little bit so that if need be, I can lock onto this with like a pair of pliers. Because as you can see, I can rotate that with my hand. <laughs> it works! Yes, that makes me so happy. Okay, uh, <laughs> I can get this thing off now. Oh, heck yes, guys. Oh my god, I can't believe that actually worked. There are tons of people out there who do not have access to a spot welder who just simply glue these on and it works just fine. Epoxy is a great way to bind this stuff together. Just make sure you put some tooth in there or the stuff will just rattle right apart. What I don't like about it is you got your positive and negatives right here, right? And um, we're going to have to jump these around a little bit. So when we pair them up, we're going to run two in series, right? So these two will be connected together. These two, these two, and these two. Or we can go these two, these two, these two, these two, these two. And so on and so forth. And each one gets its own control board. Imagine these as speakers and that uh, control board as an amplifier. And this is positive and negative on a speaker because that's exactly what these are. Um, they just resonate at a higher frequency, these transducers do. Doesn't that look awesome though? Holy crap. I love it. Oh man. One thing I need to do, I keep forgetting. Um, these are, oh, there we go. <laughs> these are almost like capacitors, right? So they will, I'm going to do it again. Oh, I don't want to do it. Uh, uh, okay, there's nothing on that one. They'll actually grow a charge. So if you uh, touch the positive and the negative with your fingers, uh, they'll give you a little shock. So <laughs> yeah, just kind of be careful. It's piezoelectric. So think of like the little uh, crystals in your lighter. You smash them down, you impact them. So any kind of uh, force on these guys, uh, it turns into electric current. <laughs> it gives you a little high voltage jolt. Um, yeah, so it's not 
bad, but it's just kind of, it just, re it reminds you of what's going on. I'm going to do it again for you. I don't want to do it though. Uh, uh, okay, that one's okay. That one, that one's good. Oh gosh, that was a good one. That, that one was real strong. So I need to get a little resistor and uh, um, just, you know, put it, put it on, connect to both poles before I start messing with them because I don't want them to have a charge when I put it all together. So I'll do that. I'll, before I plug everyone in, um, where they go in together, I'll just put a resistor in there and it'll chump up the power. <laughs> Okay, so we have our amplifier, our driver boards, whatever you want to call them. And I wanted to go over this because there's not a lot of information out there. And so when you just go to look at these and you're like, well, how do you even wire them in? It's actually really simple. It comes with uh, two of these plugs per unit, right? And it comes with two transducers. Some of them only come with one. Um, <clears throat> this is 100 watt and the transducers that I have, I believe, are 50 watts. You're going to have two little inputs right here. This one right here, you can actually see it is marked for 110. And this one over here says J2, and that goes to your transducers. Now, your transducers run in series, right? So we're going to connect two of them together. One board for two transducers. So we'll, we have a positive and a negative on these, just like you would a speaker. And you wire them in series, just like you would a speaker. And I'll show you what that looks like. I got a project box here, and uh, this is from Lowe's. And essentially, this is going to house everything. We're going to cut a couple holes in it and throw in some fans. I don't know if I'm going to do like a push pull configuration with a fan where this one's blowing inward and this one's sucking outward or if we're going to do a push pull where they're across from each other um so we'll get that sorted and figured out there also has to be a power supply that goes in here you can see i kind of went a little larger i have the space to hang this thing so i went for more than enough room because i've made the mistake before where i've tried to you know i'm not taking this whole package to lowe's and it's not even assembled yet um so I've made the mistake where I've ended up with too little space for something to go into the box that uh, I was building and had to modify it. And I want there to be plenty of room for this stuff. So as you can see, we have these little holes here in all four corners. And I just got some threaded rod and I have a box of nuts. And we're going to stack two or three depending on top of each other. And we want enough of an air gap to where air can flow through there and get to the heat sinks on the MOSFETs and um, you know just kind of cool, keep the boards cool. Um, that's very key. So we, we may end up just going with two, um, but we'll figure that out here in a little bit once we get the box open. Be very careful while you're sliding this board down. You can kind of see what we're going for. We have some adjustment to make, just a little bit. And uh, but yeah, I think that's a good gap. That that allows me to have plenty of airflow through there, and my height is okay. And then we've got one more going on top. I'm always looking to make things a little bit more streamlined and faster when I'm doing something that has repetitive. Your first one, you build it, you see how you want it to go together, and then the second one, you try to look for ways to speed up the process a little bit. One way to speed up that process, or one example of that, is put the screw on for the next one so you're not running it down, and then put your top one on. And so two nuts on every one to start off with. The second one can stay pretty low. You'll want this one kind of high. The only component that anything is close to on this side, including the bottom with your solder lines, your trace lines, you got to make sure that you're not connecting this with any trace lines. So anyway, just pop that in the bottom, get enough room for two nuts. Put your two nuts on there and make sure you have full thread in, in, like engagement on this part right here because we tapered that a little bit so we could get our nuts on there. And um, don't worry about that. When we're done, we're going to take this over to the grinder and just knock that little burr off. Not a big deal. So anyway, now we're set up in stage for the next one. See? Oop. Just like that.
Okay, so I'm trying to figure out how to wire the transducers because what I'm getting is different. Like what everyone else says other than the seller is different. And this is the most Chinesium Chinesium I've ever seen. Ready? Here we go. Circuit board and vibration head wiring instructions. The board cannot load electricity. No cleaning solution cannot be energized cleaning. Vibration first two tabs, comma, two ceramic middle lug is positive. By the upper and lower metal, metal column is negative. <laughs> By the upper and lower metal column is negative. Cannot be reversed. So we know, we, that's clear, we can't mix these up. What's not clear is anything about polarity here. A uh, transducer film on ceramic sheet cake okay, goes into a bunch of different weird stuff. Vibration head or transducer ceramic glue application. Yeah, um, <laughs> head stock stick firmly to pelvic floor cleaning. I am not kidding. That's literally what it says. <laughs> positive and negative, respectively positive and negative. Output coupled with the oscillator cannot be wrong. We have questions. Timely advice to ensure safety. <laughs> Remember to wash pots and reliable grounding and the power leakage protection switch to ensure safety. Oh, China. China, China, China. I love you. Okay, as per our instructions, we have all of our units mounted to the pelvic floor. <laughs> oh, <mighty. coughs> I don't want you to spit your coffee out. Um, next is uh, wiring this bad boy up. Hopefully this will help you guys out. We've got this set to continuity. Now I want to show you. Nothing there. We have continuity there. So we come down here. We have continuity. Which means this tab is connected to this and this. So see that? And also the tank. So this is going to be our negative. And that is actually touching, depending on your unit, it could be touching here or it could be touching up here, but it's making direct contact with that and the bolt, right? And the one that floats in the center is just on the um, uh, ceramic uh, piazzos, so, so you shouldn't get any continuity. So positive is sandwiched in the middle, and that should help you out. Now each amplifier will run two of these. The question is, do we run them in series or parallel? Well, um, these are both rated for 50 watts. The unit over there actually says 120 on the side, but in the advertisement it says 100. So I think we're going to run these in parallel, um, which means we're going to go to positive to positive and negative to negative. Okay. And the reason I'm going to do that is uh, I've I don't you can run these in series, right? But the problem is if this system's not, that amplifier's not made to run at that ohm load, then we could potentially damage the amplifier. So the safest bet is what we're going to go for, and that's just going to be running it in parallel. Okay? So these two will be together here, here, and here. So we're going to go positive, positive, negative, negative, positive, positive, negative, negative, and we're just going to connect those two lines to the amplifier. So I'm taking a second to uh, tend my wires because it doesn't take long and it just helps with soldering so I've got the helping hands here and um, that makes it a lot easier so I can do like four at once bam I'll put a link to all this crap in the description so you guys can find them but these are cheap and uh, I like them they've, they've been really good so far just throw them in there like that get some heat on there let your solder carry the heat the solder gun that I'm using has a lot of power, and so this happens really fast. You don't have to sit around and wait for it. There you go.
Okay, let's just recap again what we have here. And the reason I want to do this is because some of you guys are going to come into, you're going to build this system. You're going to build your own tank. And um, I think it's important that I'm explaining what no one else is explaining online. So this is pretty simple. You're going to have shore power or your mains come in here, right? And this is a 12 volt. So this takes 110 and turns it into 12 volt DC, right? The fans run on 12 volt DC. These fans are a little small. I'm going to replace them later with some bigger fans. Um, I thought they were bigger than this. Okay, anyway. Um, so here you have your hot leg. Here you have your... Um, neutral which I have a green wire there I really need to replace that I've gotten in trouble before using the wrong lines just because I know where this goes doesn't mean the next guy behind me is gonna know where it goes so that's really bad those are just the wrong wires I don't I, I listen to my headphones just wiring something up I know where the wires go but I always forget that someone's gonna come in and wire something after me and I'm gonna look like an idiot it's happened to me before so I need to change that out um, anyway so hot uh, your neutral and then this is going to be your ground wire and then this is your positive and negative right or sorry negative and positive of the 10 volt and all I did was couple those two together this has plenty of power now over here you're not going to be able to see this but I can drop a screw and there's a little pot right here I can adjust the voltage on this so I can turn it up or down so you can literally drop it or raise it and in this case since these are variable voltage these fans are variable voltage we can get a little more oomph out of them we can run it at like 13 volts so there's usually a, a little Little give and take on that and these should be able to handle it um, okay and then you know so I have two bus bars down here if this wasn't inside this container I wouldn't do this but this is inside an enclosure and enclosures you can't just reach your hand in there and mess with stuff anyone that opens this up and has this plugged in some they they, they darn well should know um, what they're looking at <laughs> before they try it and it's pretty simple to know what you're looking at because you just follow the line in and you see these colors and you're good to go that'll that'll direct you but we are going to go ahead and cover over these with some uh, pla some um, um, this liquid tape just in case for some reason one of these should fall over and hit this we don't want that to happen now this is not going to experience any vibration okay let's come up to this board because um, we can clearly see it. So on this side, we can trace our power legs down. So this side is power, right? But you, you're going to see it says J2 over here. Or sorry, hold on. I got to make sure I'm correct. Uh, sorry, the power is J1, right? And that's your positive and negative. This only goes in one direction, this clip. So this plug cannot be put in backwards. It it's, it's only goes in one direction, just like most automotive plugs. This over here is a positive and negative to your transducers, okay? And then on your transducers, I'll show you again what positive is on the transducers. So now, everything inside this box is complete with the exception of a switch, which I didn't wire in because I completely forgot about it while I ran this. So all I gotta do is break this line right here. Actually, just uh, get a white line and tie it in. I need to tie my switch in, and I just spaced it. I forgot. Um, so let me throw that switch in real quick, and we're done. Okay, all the wiring's done. I've got everything neatly tucked in here. You have full access to everything that you would need access to. Um, we are, uh, this box is connected to earth and all of that's good to go. We have a switch. <clears throat> Originally I was going to mount this box in a different location. I decided to go ahead and go underneath. So when I power it on, um, I already drilled a hole to have the switch like right here. And I'm going to go ahead and leave that there. I was thinking about moving it to the front, but, um, you know, if there is any splashing, it's going to be right here on this side. And I'd rather not have this switch there. So we're going to put it right on the bottom. Should be just fine. Um, so, yeah, let's do a little overview. I've got screens coming for this, too, by the way. And like I said, <clears throat> there's a possibility of moisture getting inside here. And if it does, it does. There's the same amount of possibility on the um, units that you, uh, that you would buy. So what tells me that that's likely not going to happen is this sink is designed not to have water running down it. It's designed to drip off these lips. And especially here in the front, 
that's what this is for this is a drip lip right so any water that comes over this side will drip straight down from here it will not curve back and go all the way over there so being very careful to make sure we don't get electrocuted because while everything seems to be hooked up okay I don't know about these Chinese components there could be a short in these before I even turn this on I go up and touch the tank full of water and I can't get my arm out of it and um, I you know could potentially get hurt so what we're doing is we're actually bonding and we're grounding the um, the tank to earth so this will be this is essentially connected to here through the loop and so this box is taken care of now we have a couple other components one of which is our tankless hot water heater now uh, this is a 220 unit so what we're going to do is we're going to come off this with another ground strap that goes directly to earth and that earth is my building my building is actually set up to where all the beams are earthed okay through even through the electrical box so that'll be a quick path This is also a good way to show you how secure this is. A lot of people don't get the epoxy's that tough. Okay. But it is. Okay, it's about 10% chance that'll work. Spin it. Okay. A little more. There you go, sweetheart. All right. Look underneath. Mm -hmm. Tell me if we're leaking anywhere. No. Oh my god, that is so painful. Ah. Uh, I think we need more fluid in there, guys. It's too painful. Look at the brushes. Not a good motor. That's the last thing I want. A bunch of cars flying around. Yeah, I'm not happy with this pump. We're going to replace it. And um, I'm going to bring it up to temperature, but we're going to replace it. Side of the tank is warm. Yeah, it's nice and warm. Heck yeah. Okay, so this is working just fine. We got, we got to replace our pump. Okay, no worries. Yep, now do a trickle. And this shut itself off. Okay, so she's not leaking. That's I keep disconnecting all these cables and everything and um, kind of pumping air through here. Here's what I figured out. <clears throat> this, first off, this was a little nasty inside, and it had to be cleaned out. So it was probably a dirt dauber. I got that cleaned out. We're good to go. This guy down here, no way. Ain't going to work. I got a new pump on the way that's going gonna, gonna to be the same price, but it's got a lot more uh, PSI to it, a lot more flow. And so it's going to work with our system. So this guy's got to go. And which is good because I hate this. Um, but this was a good test phase, and yeah, man, I'm, I'm excited. I'm real excited. We got some amazing results. So, this is the Inkbird controller, and what it does is shut the tank off at a certain temperature. So, 
I can hold in set right here and I can drop this temperature down to say 125 so that'll be a comfortable temperature right there and we'll hold it down it does a lot more stuff than this but that's all we really use it for now well we can go in here and do this watch hold it down now I can determine how many degrees different so if that drops two degrees or we'll make it five degrees so once this drops five degrees it will turn off the pump the pump in turn will turn off the heater because this requires flow and pressure to be activated so this is just on all the time but it only uses electricity when it kicks on this is running on 220 our pump is 12 volt and this is the pump that I ended up finding it's actually from my RV we have an old dilapidated RV I want to do a restoration on that pretty soon but this pump right here is the only pump you can get well the cheapest pump you can get that will uh, actually allow pressure and we just have that running to a 12 volt power supply I had some issues with not enough fluid getting it was a little restrictive like these things work great when you when you're dealing with like 60 80 100 psi but it was a little too restrictive and so I went ahead and removed it our flow is great that's the flow we want and we're kicking it 138 we can kick it to 100 140 okay we're gonna let the tank come up to temperature here's our probe and I just drop it anywhere in the tank so we'll put it right here you can see we're about 98 degrees I think right now and in 10 minutes she'll be up to 140 or 126 and then she'll shut down this side probably looks worse we're gonna go with this side we'll face that to the sounders now whatever side you face to the ultrasonic sounders is gonna clean off um, considerably faster than the side that you do not face towards the sounders just the way it is it's gonna get more of that vibration hitting it directly so we're back up to 120 she climbed up in about a minute and a half um, it heats really fast guys and the side of this tank's pretty warm okay so it's 317 and we're gonna see how long it takes I'll just turn the camera back on when we hit 125 okay we're at 125 it's 319 so couple minutes it shot up there and now we're just gonna wait here up oh, there it goes actually there's an easy way for me to show you that I'll just pull this out temperature gauge is out turns on all by itself drop it back in Come on, girl, one degree. Everybody's waiting. <laughs> Gonna happen? There you go. So, as you can see over here, that shut itself off too. Okay, so we'll just give you a good look at this guy. Um, let's find the face we want. Yeah, that's the nasty face right there. So there you go. She is gnarly. Okay, I'm going to put it in there right now. Okay, the anvil is in the tank. And um, it looks like the evaporus already started to attack it. So now all we have to do is flip the switch and you will not be able to hear a thing. It'll kick all these guys on. It's going to be loud. So we're gonna give her about 30 more minutes and then we'll pull it out and this side should be clean. So a lot of it's gone. And you can see like this is all bare metal right here. It's kind of hard because this is cast. Um, but I mean, you can obviously see as it's steaming off how much darker this is in color as opposed to red in color. So this, that that's dry right there and that's just metal. Okay, we'll chunk this guy in. Kind of lay him that way. Um, that's going to give us a range to see how quickly it removes it all the way across the tank versus here. And these guys will just drop in. Beautiful. Okay, so I just 
Okay, mama just called, said we gotta go to the store. It's 421. Okay, looks fantastic. <laughs> I'm very, very impressed. Look at that. That's bare metal, guys. There's zero rust there. There's one little pocket. Um, no, that's not even rust. Once again, we'll show you the time, 423. I'm gonna put a link in the description for you guys to go get all this stuff. So I've got a really, really neat project that's coming up after this one. And um, yeah, the shop's just, you know, getting built. There's tons of tools that I've always wanted to build and now I'm starting to build them. I think this is gonna be fun and I'd like for you guys to join me. I got the piston. <laughs> there you go. Pretty no oh, even all that carbon's gone. Oh, look at that, it's breaking it up. Wow. That is too cool. See that, that real thick carbon right there? Holy cow. That's incredible. I mean, that's ultrasonic for you. But this was face down. This wasn't even face up. Let me rinse it. That is too cool. All right. I have no need to throw this back in there, but I'm going to throw it back in anyway. <laughs> what else did I put in here? Ah, it's hot, hot, hot. Wow. That's incredible. That was facing the ultrasound and or ultrasonics, and that was not. Still, both sides completely removed rust. That's just like damn near polished. So cool.